What's the link between my cell phone, my laptop, and this beverage? Believe it or not, the link is through lithium, the lightest of all metals. Pretty interesting story about 7-Up. Takes us all the way back to 1929, when Charles Grigg invented this beverage, originally calling it lithiated lime soda. Why? Because he had heard stories about people drinking naturally lithiated water, because lithium is found in the soil, in Lithia Springs, Georgia, and that they were claiming that they were happy. Well, eventually, of course, we know that lithium compounds came to be used in manic depressive uh, illness. But he really didn't know about that, but he saw marketing uh, opportunity. So he took some lithium citrate, added it to water, and came up with 7-Up. Why 7-Up? There's some controversy about that. The up, supposedly, is the uplift that you got from the lithium in there. And the seven, they said that contained seven ingredients. Although some people suggested that maybe it referred to the number of times you burped after drinking the beverage. Anyway, there is no longer any lithium uh, in there. The uh, FDA in the US put an end to that. So now it's just a sugary soft drink. But what about the cell phone and the laptop? They couldn't possibly function without batteries. Which kind of battery? It's the lithium ion battery. This is a real breakthrough. First of all, lithium as a metal is very, very light so that uh, you can store a lot of energy in relatively uh, little weight. Uh, all batteries really work the same way. They produce a stream of electrons. That's what current is. And because lithium has the ability to give up electrons easily, it is a very good substance for manufacturing batteries. And now they're quite long lasting. We have the batteries in automobiles and you can go Oh, four or five hundred kilometers with a, a single charge, which is really quite amazing. Of course, it doesn't mean that there are no problems with those batteries. There are, because uh, what happens to them when they eventually cease to function? Recycling technology is around, but uh, it requires a lot of sophisticated machinery, and you also have to be dealing with a lot of, of, of uh, materials that are potentially toxic. Also found in these lithium ion batteries is cobalt. And uh, the mining of cobalt is particularly hazardous because of the dust that is produced. And it's very often mined in um, parts of Africa where the natives don't really have any protective gear. They don't wear gloves. They don't have breathing equipment. So there are all kinds of issues. And there's a real impetus to find efficient ways of recycling the lithium ion batteries because, of course, we are going to be using more and more of them. But to give you an idea, of the impact that these batteries have had on our life. The Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize this year in chemistry went to three professors who had major roles to play in the development of the battery. John Goodenough, what a name that is for a Nobel Prize winner, Stanley Wittigam, and Akiro Yoshino, Japanese researcher. And they shared the Nobel Prize. That's my Nobel Prize. I don't really have one. Well, I guess I do. This is mine. It's a replica. But the Nobel Prize, of course, is the most exalted prize in, uh, in science. And never, I think, was it more deserving than for the lithium ion batteries. Why? Because it makes our life easier. We couldn't really function these days without our cell phones, with our laptops. At least I couldn't. Although I can't function without that. It would be kind of, uh, I think, opportune to toast the lithium ion battery with the formerly lithiated soft drink, except that I don't drink soft drinks.